Um, please welcome on stage Bernard Wabno, who, who's going to talk about BISQ. Uh, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Bernard. I am a software developer and a contributor to BISC, which is an open source, KYC free, uh, decentralized crypto exchange. And uh, it is run by a, a decentralized autonomous organization, uh, which went live uh, early this year. Uh, and I'd like to share with you uh, details, how it works, how it differs from centralized exchanges, and um, how it is funded, how it operates. And this is the uh, agenda. So first I will tell you how the centralized exchanges work, um, some risks about um, uh, associ associated with centralized exchanges, uh, the BISC's approach to trade, and then I will tell you a few words about uh, the mm, decentralized uh, autonomous organization that we have with BISC. So the problem when you've got uh, some funds uh, and you uh, like cryptos and you want to sell them, you need two things. First, you need to find a buyer and then make sure that they pay. Uh, because with uh, fiat payments, you can roll back the transaction. Uh, basically, well, not roll back the transaction, just uh, ask for a chargeback. And uh, in case of blockchain, the transactions are immutable. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at uh, how traditional model works with the centralized exchange. So we've got this um, Alice and Bob, two uh, strangers who've got some assets that want to trade. And uh, they don't know each other, but they know one of those uh, uh, popular websites uh, of centralized exchanges. Uh, so they first sign up, uh, create their uh, user account. Usually they have to go through the KYC uh, procedure, uh, prove their ad identity, uh, and uh, provide the, their um, pictures of IDs, for example. Uh, next thing, um, they need to send their fiat uh, to bank account of that exchange. Uh, the other party uh, sends the um, crypto funds to the wallet held by the exchange. And finally, um, they uh, create the buy and sell orders and the um, centralized uh, exchange would automatically match those. But uh, does Bob control the withdrawal of the fund? Uh, those arrows depict um, who controls uh, the action. So Bob signs up. He's the, he initiates this thing. Uh, he sends the money. So uh, he controls this. Uh, his fund, if he wants to send them to the exchange or not. Uh, same with crypto funds. But he does not control the withdrawal. He's got this nice user interface uh, where he can fill his bank account and uh, where the funds should be sent back. But he only creates a request. And it is the exchange that actually controls mm, those funds and it's up to them. So, centralized exchange may bro block your access to its functionality because you need to, all the logic is there in one central place. You cannot interact with others like directly. Uh -huh. So, they need to authenticate you and effectively they can ban you. They can, deny, uh, they can decide that they don't want to send your fiat. Uh, same with cryptos. Uh, but what you gain is this nice user interfa interface, usually liquidity, and uh, 
the trade is automatically, uh, the offers are, aut are automatically matched. And some other problems with the uh, centralized exchange is that uh, crypto wallets are, especially when there is a lot of funds there, uh, they are really nice uh, targets for hackers. But also the employees of the exchange and the owners sometimes have a hard time resisting temptation of running away with those bags. Uh, it's easy for any government, well maybe not for any, but for some governments to shut down the exchange. Uh, the company that operates the exchange may go bankrupt or it can lose access to the uh, traditional banking system and they won't be able to send uh, send you back your fiats. Uh, even though they are legit, they hold the funds, but they are denied access to the banking system. So. What if uh, there was no company behind the exchange and that exchange was an open source and peer-to-peer -peer software just like Bitcoin is or BitTorrent, for example, which uh, most of you are familiar. And that's the approach that BISC takes. Uh, it is anonymous. You don't have to register. You just download the software. This is desktop application written in Java. So you just download the binary, uh, verify that it's the right binary, and you just start it up. It connects over Tor to other peers and discovers, uh, asks other peers, do you know other people? Yes, give me their addresses. And you know more people more and more with each node that you connect to. Um, the code is open source, so that uh, no government can shut it down. Uh, any, it, there's no company behind it. Uh, if government goes after the uh, current developers, anybody is free to fork the code and just uh, continue the development. It is peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, so you communicate directly with others. There's no central servers that uh, control the offer book. Uh, offers are broadcasted as messages to other peers. And same, when you want to take the offer, you contact directly with that peer. The downside is uh, that there is no auto-matching. You have to manually pick a specific offer that you would like to take. And users, users control their funds uh, because the wallet is uh, on their machine. And only Bitcoin wallet, uh, while the um, other wallets like uh, I know Monero, for example, uh, they are not even managed by BISC. So they are completely uh, um, disconnected and you are responsible for managing. Uh, the last bit is um, common to many other peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, uh, but usually it's the only one. Uh, many exchanges uh, mm, boast on the fact that uh, users hold their funds, so that makes that exchange uh, decentralized. But was Napster decentralized? You were connecting to other people, downloading the files, but somehow it was taken down. And mm, the reason why it was taken down was that there was a company behind it, and there was a central server. And uh, the project is self-funding. It provides valuable service. People pay for it, and they pay with a very interesting manner. Uh, so, new contributors are uh, completely compensated. And I will tell you about that with uh, DAO part. Yeah, and the community controls the spending. It's not like uh, that you, that there was an ICO, BISC raised lots of funds, and they don't have to work like 
forever or can spend on anything. Uh, each uh, compensation request that any member of uh, community does, you can do it as well, uh, goes, uh, uh, goes into a voting cycle and uh, the entire community votes if they want to uh, honor that uh, compensation request and actually grant you the uh, funds. So, uh, any questions until now? So I'll continue. Uh, the idea uh, about making the transaction um, sort of atomic uh, to make sure that the, the other party does not run, run away with the funds is that uh, both buyer and seller send their funds to a multi-sig wallet. Uh, so the Bitcoin seller sells the amount uh, for the trade plus security deposit, and uh, buyer sends uh, security deposit and uh, a, and the fee uh, for the transaction. Uh, and that fee uh, goes to arbitrators, or uh, if it's in Bitcoins, or if it's in BSQ, which is a colored coin um, based on Bitcoin, uh, then that funds, uh, that fee is burned. The, it disappears. So once the trade is, uh, once the transaction for the trade is placed on the blockchain, uh, the buyer needs to mm, go to the bank if the if the trade is uh, fiat to crypto, uh, make the transfer, put some. Uh, uh, data in the comment of the transfer so that the uh, Bitcoin seller knows, uh, can identify uh, who this money rec was received from. And once, uh, once the funds arrive uh, into bank account of the buyer, of the seller, the seller uh, releases the uh, funds from the multisig wallet. If uh, if there was a um, problem, the trade was not made uh, within some uh, time frame, or uh, one of the parties uh, thinks that was cheated, they open this trade, uh, they open a dispute, and it goes to arbitration. And uh, about arbitration, maybe later, if there will be questions. Uh, now I would like to go through the screens, uh, how it works actually. First thing that you need to do is to set up the payment account. It's just an information that will be displayed to the other party, uh, to which bank account uh, they should send the funds. And they do it completely outside of, uh, of this application. They have to open their mobile or just go to the bank and uh, issue the transfer. This is the view of the uh, order book. Uh, I've selected the BSQ, uh, so I want to buy or sell the BSQ here. Uh, actually, buy the Bitcoin and sell BSQ tokens. So you see individual offers. It's not like on other exchanges that you just specify the amount of Bitcoin you want to buy, the price, and just let the uh, central server to match other offers or wait, you have to manually take offers from individuals. Uh, you can, some offers are fixed, so you have to take the whole uh, amount, and some are range offers, so you can uh, take any amount within that range. When you click that button, uh, uh, to sell BSQ, to take this offer, your application contacts the application of that other person. Nobody else knows that you are actually doing this trade. Uh, not even BISC developers or maintainers. The only, the only public thing was the um, 
the message that was broadcasted to the whole community that you want to you offer bitcoins at some price that's all and only your uh, address in tor network so there is no personal information at all anywhere next you um, you have a window where you can select if you want to pay the fee in bitcoin or bsq uh, if it was a ranged offer you can uh, specify the range if you don't want to take the full amount uh, you will be prompted with the um, funds that you need to deposit for this transaction uh, it will uh, show you how much is for uh, for the security deposit how much for the trade fee uh, and uh, the mining fee trade fee is different than mining fee mining fee goes goes to bitcoin miners and trade fee uh, goes to the BISC community. Uh, then you need to fund the address. This is the multisig address that uh, you're sending the funds to. You can fund it from external wallet. That's why there is this QR code. Or you can transfer from the internal wallet managed by the application if you have any funds there. It's useful to have funds here just to pay for the fees. Finally, there is a window where you confirm the information. Uh, the only thing that you see are the onion addresses of the other parties and arbitrators. It's very important to make sure that the number of zeros is right, because it's easy to mess up here. Yeah, and now you go to uh, portfolio where you have to wait for at least one confirmation on the blockchain. Uh, this transaction happens on Bitcoin blockchain, so 10 minutes and if um, depending on the congestion of the network, you might wait a bit longer. Once you have at least one confirmation, you will be prompted that you are ready to uh, sell, uh, send the uh, either fiat or in this case, I was uh, buying Bitcoin for uh, BSQ tokens. I was selling BSQ, so it tells me instead of sending dollars to some bank account, it tells me to send uh, BSQ to this address. Same with other altcoins. Once I send those funds, uh, I have to click this payment started. It's not enough to click this button. If you click this button and wait long enough, the other party will get angry and uh, and will open a dispute. So, because I was selling BSQ tokens, uh, I went to uh, DAO tab, then the BSQ wallet, because uh, BSQ tokens are managed. And there is a built-in um, there's a built-in wallet inside of the this application. Uh, I go to send. I paste the address the mm, amount, click the send funds, and that's all. And I have to go back to the screen of, um, of the trade and click this payment started. And that's all that I have to do as a, mm, a Bitcoin buyer. And now it's the up to the other party to, they will see exactly the same screen, but instead of payment started, they will see the button payment received. and. Don't click, if you are a Bitcoin seller, don't click this button unless the, uh, the other cryptos have uh, you receive them on your wallet or uh, you've got the funds in your bank account. Because once you click this button, you sign the transaction and you release the funds from the multi-sig wallet. Yeah, and because everything uh, is stored on your hard drive, do the backup. It's, uh, it's always better to be safe than sorry. This is uh, the graph of the fiat volume. Uh, it's not that much. Recently, it was around uh, 50 Bitcoin uh, traded into fiat uh, for last month, or no, I think it was July. Uh, Altcoin is much bigger. Uh, mm, most active market is Monero. Uh, 
this uh, screenshot was taken month ago, I guess. So US dollars, BSQ, Monero, Euro, DAI, Stablecoin, Zcash, Namecoin, Dash, and then very little offers. Limitations and inconveniences. Because you need to pay the uh, mining fee and the transaction fee, you need some Bitcoin uh, to start. It's not like on, on other exchanges where you just send fiat and you can start trading. Here actually you need to have some Bitcoin, but it's equivalent of like one dollar. So you can uh, just go to other people and ask them to send you uh, some change. There is a limitation of uh, individual trade of uh, uh, 0 0.01 Bitcoin and uh, the reason is that there are scammers who, uh, if the, there is enough, um, if the trade is big enough, they will go after you and uh, try the chargeback attack. So if you, uh, if you sell your Bitcoin for crypto, you are safe because uh, usually other blockchains are also hard to roll back. But in case of fiat, it goes over traditional banking system and um, attackers use buy stolen accounts on a darknet, for example, and uh, they would send you funds from the st stolen uh, account. So you will see that there are funds on your account, you will send them your Bitcoin, but then uh, the person who, uh, who was actual owner of the account will see this transaction will go to the bank and ask for a chargeback. And if they prove that the, they were hacked, the bank uh, might charge back and they will take the money away from you. That's why, for example, there is no PayPal support here in BISC because in PayPal it's uh, very, very easy to do the chargeback. So merchants are at mercy of their customers. However, coming back to this limitation, you can have multiple trades um, uh, at the same time. So 0 0.01 Bitcoin, but, uh, but you can have multiple trades open. Uh, banks are slow. So in case of recently SEPA uh, in Europe is very fast, like within hours, uh, but it used to be like even five days. BISC supports also money order for your <laughs> United States. So you can go to the post office and send money that way. So that will, the trade will last for eight days. Uh, in case of uh, cryptos, uh, if you want to trade altcoins to Bitcoin, in the tr duration of the trade, maximum trade duration is one day but you can create altcoin instant account and this is just to indicate that you uh, obliged to do the trade within one hour. Yeah, and the other problematic part with BISC is that those are your keys, so if you lose them, you lose your funds and no, uh, nobody will save you then. Yeah, and you have to uh, manage your data, do the backups, and keep them safe. Because if you are, if you're hard, if you have any malware, if uh, on your laptop or your PC, then there is no security for you. Yeah, it's, it's very easy then to steal your data from, from BISC. So you must make sure that you run BISC on, uh, on a safe hardware. Other, uh, other inconvenience is that because this is peer-to-peer -peer network, um, it will be very easy to spam network with too many offers, so you have to keep on uh, broadcasting your offer every five minutes. If you don't broadcast it, it will expire and uh, people who received it will just uh, remove it. 
from the list. That's why uh, you have to keep your uh, computer up and running when you have your offer published. There is work to, uh, to set up Raspberry Pi with BISC and some um, cool other software for Bitcoin so you so that you could uh, access it remotely through VNC or maybe a mobile app in future. Uh, but uh, it's still uh, under development. Any questions uh, for this part? So the only proof that I sell some B Bitcoin is on my computer, in some uh, da 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 database or file or so something like that. A proof that you s sold? Sell, yes, sold. sold no, the sold. proof is uh, the proof is on the blockchain. Uh, so, or oh, okay, blockchain. You mean uh, that I tra transfer some uh, tra transfer some uh, Bitcoin from one account to uh, uh, another? But I mean uh, that I sold it for uh, I don't know one one hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, only the other party knows that. Yes, only the other you party. and and the other par party. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you, your offer is published to everyone, but it contains very little data. If anybody is able to link your personal, your identity to Onion address, which is the Tor address, you're screwed. But as long as you can uh, keep your identity detached from the Onion address, which you can change frequently, uh, you're safe. Uh, It's rather that uh, if I sell some Bitcoin, I should pay some ta taxes, and uh, uh, other way around, if I buy some uh, some uh, some Bitcoin, it's my tax cost. Uh, so I need something to uh, something to uh, prove it, and then I just ask why, uh, how ca can I do do that in 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 BISC? So for now, my concern in is now my uh, anonymous, uh, my my identity, but uh, proving for uh, for uh, tax uh, office uh, that uh, this income is by uh, by uh, sold some some bitcoins or or other way way uh, uh, around. If you have traded. Bitcoin for altcoins. I don't. Yes, yes. For alt uh, for altcoins, it's not a pro pro mm -hmm. problem. Uh, for fiat, right? Yes. Yes. So whenever uh, doesn't matter what channel you use, you always have to use um, some random number that is specific to this trade. Yes. Right? Yes, I know. So you can. That's how you could try proving mm -hmm. that. Hey, there's my bank account, um, and there is this payment with this number, so, uh, and I've got this uh, database here on my local drive, and there is this uh, yes. information. Mm -hmm. So that's how you could try proving it. I don't know. This mm -hmm. uh, is not meant for uh, showing to authorities or any other parties <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, I have a security question. Uh, I have a scenario, and I wonder if BISC um, provides me with some uh, measures, you know, to, to defend. Uh, let's say I'm selling one Bitcoin or 0 0.01 Bitcoin for USD dollars, for US dollars, and uh, the buyer sends me the dollars to, to my bank account. But I anti-social. I decide to claim that he never sent that, and I don't care about the coins I, I put into. Uh, BISC network. Uh, I'm just saying. I, I'm just starting the dispute. Yeah. And what happens then? Of course, the 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 victim of this is the is the person who sent dollars. Yeah. Usually, that other party that sent the uh, fiat funds uh, will open the dispute. So um, there is trusted role currently. We're working to remove that role. Uh, so it's a person who is an arbitrator. And uh, he will also, also uh, you will contact that person through the software 
it's like a chat and you will tell that hey that other part I sent uh, the funds here is like a confirmation from the bank uh, and depending on the payment method that you choose because you can send over Revolut, Venmo or uh, or bank account or, or postal uh, money order uh, so depending on the method there are different ways to um, to deliver uh, proofs so the party that sent funds is responsible for providing the proofs to the arbitrator arbitrator contacts the other party usually there are uh, there are disputes being opened but uh, most of them it's because people uh, thought that it's enough just to press the button that payment has started uh, or they didn't know what to do so it's it's not that bad actors there were a few uh, and uh, uh, there were a few uh, uh, and that's why this limitation is imposed and but users were compensated for the problems does that answer your question so I have a follow-up question how are the arbitrators chosen um, those are uh, people who lock up around 50,000 US dollars in the bond on our uh, in our DAO and if they are they would be found uh, mm, guilty of collusion for example they then there will be uh, at any time any member any user of this application is uh, mm, is allowed to open uh, request a proposal to compensate the bond and the whole community votes and if community is uh, mm, convinced that uh, the guy is the arbitrator is uh, guilty then uh, their bond is confiscated uh, right now there are, uh, there are very few arbitrators and those are people that were uh, with the project like from the start almost but we're working on the uh, new trade protocol that would remove the need for arbitrators. Uh, it's still uh, a conception, uh, an idea. Uh, uh, so the uh, research uh, work is being uh, done right now on this. Uh, but we hope to introduce like a mediator role that would try to uh, figure out who's guilty and just give uh, their opinion to the community but it still would be a community that would uh, vote uh, which way to open the um, this multi-sig or in other uh, if there would be like different approach uh, that traders would lock up the bonds and just are like arbitrators whose bonds to confiscate Uh, everyone who holds BSQ tokens so you can go to the exchange and buy the tokens because the uh, voting power the, uh, it's not the number of votes it's how much of the tokens you hold the more influential you want to be the more tokens you need to hold but there is like additional uh, weighting factor it's uh, amount of tokens that you have been compensated with so if you are a developer or other contributor tra translator and you have earned those tokens you can spend them but still over a period of two years you have the voting power equal to amount of tokens that you have earned and this uh, linearly uh, diminishes until it goes down to zero so if you uh, if you earned um, let's say you um, uh, you did some software for BISC some some new feature you develop a new feature uh, and uh, you requested 10,000 US dollars and the community gave that to you 
then your voting power is 10,000 that you hold plus uh, the 10,000, uh, well, maybe the other way around. If you sell this, you still have 10,000 uh, as your like reputation. If you would hold those tokens, you would have like 20,000 of voting power. But after one year, if you still hold this 10,000 that you earned, then you have 10,000 that you hold, but only 5,000 because the half is already burned due to the uh, time uh, passing by. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it is pretty, uh, uh, there's few contributors, so uh, the amount of those tokens is in few hands right now. Yes, uh, I am contributor. This is open source software, so anybody of you can just go there and do translation. We don't have Polish translation, so you can go there, do the translation, and just ask for the compensation. We do it on monthly basis. You just, uh, but I will, uh, will go over that process in a moment. And uh, I am reviewing the assets. If you have a new altcoin that you want to list, list on BISC, I will review the pull request and uh, I also developed the API uh, so that we can have uh, third-party software connecting to BISC like trading bots or maybe um, uh, like a mobile client. Yes? So, um, a good developer, a like very skilled developer, uh, could ask for um, even 15,000 US dollars a month. Uh, but you, you need to have the skill. Uh, you can just go there and see what people earn, like even for translation, it's like a few hundred dollars for, and it's not like complete translation, it's for like, uh, per thousand or whatever words. So just, uh, I encourage you guys to, uh, if you're interested, visit the uh, compensation repository uh, and you will have idea how, how much for what stuff you can, you can earn there. Uh, the, the problem is that you get the uh, compensation in BSQ tokens. And the problem is if there is a demand uh, so, uh, first month, uh, there was, uh, in the first cycle, there was uh, a lot of tokens because it was like a Genesis transaction and it covered all, like, three years of development uh, that took place in the past. Uh, so, that was substantial. But right now, we are uh, uh, almost even. So, the uh, supply... Uh, uh, from the tokens being generated for a compensation request is almost equal to the uh, amount being burned in fees. Uh, but that changes on like amount of work that people do. So sometimes it's not that you will be able to sell everything this month. Maybe some, you have to wait for, uh, for a bit longer. It, the, it, this is a, the BSQ is a colored coin, uh, so it's like a colored Bitcoin. Yes, it's on Bitcoin blockchain, as well as the transactions for the trades. Yes, and it's actually like few transactions, because first there's a transaction to uh, create the trade, so fund the multi-sig address and then there is a transaction to pay out. Yes, yes, they are.
uh, no, I think uh, nobody's working on Lightning integration right now. I think that there is a there is definitely work on uh, going completely off chain, uh, so that the, we are not dependent on the uh, mining fees of the Bitcoin blockchain. Yes. We don't have atomic swaps yet, and uh, we don't have experts right now. But if you would be interested, I think that would be very welcome con uh, contribution. Yes, most probably, but the work has been started uh, three years ago, so uh, the environment was completely different. Nobody thought that fees would go up to 50 bucks. Uh, so that's why now uh, there's uh, pretty intensive research on going off-chain. Just like you would just like you would uh, change your Bitcoin for uh, US dollars. So for with US dollars, you have to go to your bank. And with Monero, you have to open your Monero client and uh, make the transaction there. So only the Bitcoin part is being managed by the BISC software. So software is not uh, not free. Uh, and there is also some maintenance cost for the seed nodes. So those are the nodes that you connect first when you first uh, download the software and you want to discover other people. That's what the seed nodes are. Uh, yeah, somebody has to maintain the domain name and stuff like that. So there is uh, BISC. Uh, this year, early this year, became through the centralized autonomous organization so it is self-funded and self-governed and uh, it's a pretty complex uh, picture here but uh, basically contributors ask for BSQ and if they are uh, the community votes if they want to grant the tokens if so then uh, the tokens are created to to the wallet of the contributors. And on the other hand, the users that want to trade, they pay the uh, transaction fees. And when they pay the transaction fee in uh, BSQ, that uh, BSQ is actually burned. It disappears. It's, it's uncolored. You just uh, get, you stay with few Satoshis. So, if you are a contributor and you want to ask for a compensation request, you just go to uh, one of our GitHub repositories and you create a, a ticket in the issue section. You specify what you've done. So, that guy uh, did some uh, uh, code contributions. Uh, some screenshots, so probably did some with the, uh, also something with the YouTube, and he specifies how much he wants to receive. And the, yeah, and other people can can see what, uh, and basically their uh, nickname here should match what will be inside this application. So you also go to, so here you we just store the data, the description, what you did. Uh, and the voting happens in the application. So you go to the DAO, governance, uh, you create new uh, new request, a compensation request, because you, you, because you can also uh, request to com uh, confiscate uh, somebody's bond or uh, to lock up your bond or uh, to change some parameter of the network. And you need like two BSQs to to create uh, that request. 
and then everybody who holds uh, or held BSQs within uh, last two years sees uh, those requests, uh, can click on the link and is being uh, redirected to GitHub to see the details, and they can vote up or down if they agree. And they can also not vote at all. Um, yeah, do we see? Yeah, here and here you see at at the top, uh, those are the phases of the voting cycle. So first there is a proposal phase, uh, then the voting uh, reveal because the, uh, we want we don't want other members of the community to look at how other people are voting. I will vote the same way. So your uh, vote is uh, uh, in this first uh, second phase is encrypted. Uh, but you just publish it uh, and bro broadcast, uh, and in the third phase uh, you uh, reveal your vote. And there is a short phase at the end where the results are presented to everyone. Yep, and I think that would be all uh, with this presentation. Uh, this is our website. Uh, we. Um, I invite you to join our Slack channel uh, or forums, but uh, our Slack is very active and uh, you will get almost immediate response. So feel free to join. We have time for two free questions. Time for the entire voting cycle, so from the, all the uh, four it's in expressed in blocks, but it's around one month. Any other questions? Uh, maybe like um, user experience, yes. Yeah? So uh, let's say uh, I want to buy like uh, bitcoins uh, here in uh, Poland, and if I want to use the BISC, so how it uh, looks like in reality so uh, is it possible like here in Wroclaw so I just uh, launch an application yes yeah, so create this uh, request and uh, so uh, can you just maybe make a rough estimate so how it will go on like in reality mm, I didn't get the question w so because I thought of it initially you were asking about regulatory matters uh, uh, so uh, let's say uh, here yeah so uh, if i want to buy uh, bitcoins like uh, without uh, like kyc or something yeah so uh, uh, here in poland it's like kind of i, I found that is like quite hard and it's uh, easier to use some sort of uh, like russian exchanges or something like that and uh, so compared to that like uh, would this be easier so it's uh, more about like end user perspective of the application like uh, here like in, in Poland maybe compared to local bitcoins but so, so are, you, are you asking about the privacy no 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 so it's uh, how easy it is uh, to use uh, BISC right now right here with regards to liquidity uh, yeah and uh, uh, so like uh, to let's say if I want to buy like zero one bitcoin so De dep depends on what you are uh, selling in exchange. If you if you sell uh, mm, fiat, you need access to bank account. So Polish zloty market is uh, very illiquid in BISC, uh, but euro is very popular. So it's, you can trade with uh, people from around Europe, being here in Poland. If you have uh, uh, Revolut, I've heard somebody's using Revolut. Yeah, you can use that as well. So I you're not tied to the um, geographical location. Mm -hmm. As long as you can access that platform from here over the internet. The problem is like uh, in China because they block Tor. Mm. Uh, so. Uh, Chinese people are having problems uh, reaching BISC. Mm -hmm. But uh, like people I, uh, are using it right now, yeah, and it's 
quite 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 possible to use it for. IOS. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can you can trade on mm, from mm, just being in Poland doesn't stop you from from using it. You just trade with any other Europeans or even other parties, depending depending on uh, on the currency pair that you're interested in. Question: How many users daily you have? Like you, you said, there's a lot of users. Uh, can you say, uh, uh, like, is it my million users or like uh, 100? It's um, it's hard to say uh, because um, users. We all we know about users is uh, the offers that are being published. Uh, and we don't know if e offers that disappear disappear because somebody shut down their machine or if the offer was taken. So we only know about the uh, offers that, that have been published. And uh, we can speak only about like the trade volume. I think that's the only uh, the only thing. The download of the software. Yeah, you, you, yeah, we can speak about the downloads. Also, it's, so it's see going from the GitHub. Yeah, I uh, guess. Do we have the numbers here? I don't have uh, the numbers in here, but uh, mm, yeah, we will have to check it on the website. Uh, okay, I have two questions actually. Uh, one is about Bitrus. I believe your largest competitor. Uh, do you know Bitrus? Uh, no. Oh uh, well, okay. I've heard about them, but uh, I haven't used them. So I, my first question was, what are the benefits of using BISC over Bitrest? But I guess we cannot answer that. Um, they have some approach about uh, I'm not sure of the name. Is it gateways or or, or token providers? Which means that basically uh, one of the customers in Bitrest or selected user uh, provides something called like USD Bitrest or BSD, whatever. Uh, which is a way of representing uh, fiat or any other cryptocurrencies outside BitShares world, world, and you can uh, basically buy it from them, and then inside BitShares you can you can trade this specific uh, token. Uh, do you have something similar in your plans? And uh, what do you think of this approach? Why wh you know why why choose this over this? Uh, I don't know. If, uh, I don't think it's possible. I don't know about the plans of, uh, of developing this. Uh, BISC is focused on privacy. Mm -hmm. So your keys, it's uh, decentralized. You tr you nobody, as long as you can reach other people over internet, if your provider will not stop you or your government is not blocking like the whole tour, then you can trade directly with others. Uh, and that other party, if you trade altcoins, they don't know anything about you. Uh, and they would know only uh, about, uh, about you if you use like uh, fiat, because they will see your the details on, on their bank account statement. But uh, mm, with BISC, you won't be a victim of like uh, uh, large data leak uh, so no personal information would uh, would be published to to the darknet because uh, there is no central place. And another question about DAO because I believe this DAO part is actually the best thing about BISC here. And uh, is BISC one of the largest DAOs? Is it one of the first? Do you know any other DAOs which you could you know compare BISC to, or or you know do you have some models which are inspired by? When developing it, uh, I think about DAOs. Uh, I don't know. DAO is like the uh, uh, child of uh, Manfred, who was the main, uh, the author of BISC. Uh, I don't know what he was um, familiar with at that time. Uh, I think that it's one of a very, very few DAOs that really work and that they are sustainable because they are funded by the service and in a decentralized manner, just as you have seen on that, uh, on that picture. Mm -hmm. So we are able to, um, to compensate efforts of 
community without directly transferring the funds to one address from where some, uh, some one entity would uh, dispatch it to, uh, to contributors. So th that's, that's the whole beauty of, of this DAO. I'm not aware of any other that would do it this way. Well, because in the future, yeah, if we have the world, let's say, controlled by DAOs, then I would suppose uh, this could uh, collaborate or, or you know, uh, trade with uh, other organizations somehow. Like, like if the economy uh, wants to exist, like, like DAO economy, uh, there should be more than one uh, organization. Yeah, there should be other uh, companies like with t contracts between them and 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 you know interaction. Yeah. Are you asking if BISC will uh, uh, open its platform to other uh, entities? For example, well? yes. Or uh, sell some services to other entities. Yeah. Mm, I don't think so, because the, mm, it's a very specific situation, yeah, that you provide a virtual service and you can... Um, uh, and this model of incentive and the, uh, but, but there's somebody who wants to consume the service and want to pay for it. And there's somebody who, who delivers the service uh, and, and they need to be compensated. That's very unique uh, to, to very specific business like, like this exchange. I don't think that it could be very easily applied to uh, random business. I mean, uh, you are currently trading uh, Bitcoin for other fiat or cryptocurrencies, but you could easily and expand the business to any other kind of service because you already have the organization with your stakeholders, uh, budget meetings, etc. Right? Probably, probably with uh, with the new trade protocol, if it would be um, uh, off chain, then probably the BISC would turn in sort of escrow. Like, but it would not care what is happening, who is trading what for what. Just if one party is able to prove that they did something and uh, uh, they are eligible for the funds, then the community would pro or release the funds to that person. And it doesn't matter if you're selling cows for Bitcoin or for dollars. Uh, I think that would be doable then. But we will see uh, if we will be able to develop this. Okay, I think Bernard will still be available during the networking session, is that right? Uh, what's the time Fif right now? 15 minutes, uh, five past nine. Uh, yeah, so I, I will have to leave shortly, so probably 15 minutes I will okay. still be there. Yeah. So if you have a question, you can catch him. Uh, so uh, please give him a warm applause and thank you for the presentation. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we are done for today. Uh, so we need to clean up this space and we meet uh, outside of the building around like half past nine and we will probably go for some beer and burgers. So yeah, thank you for coming.